good day all welcome to another episode of arise with amber thank you guys so much for joining me we finished out the like a river tour this past weekend so we spent some good time up in fort worth with our family and our friends and um there was a ton of people there so we didn't get to see everyone that we wanted to see but we're so grateful for everyone who traveled from all over the world to come we had some people come in from japan we had so many people come in and drive from all over or fly from all over. So it was just such a blessing. We're so thankful. And it was just an emotional couple of days, um, just knowing that that chapter is coming to an end, but also so exciting for the next chapter and the incredible story that God is writing in our lives. So I also got the feedback on the extra arise and it looks like the consensus is yes to do another arise per week so I will work on that for this week I'm also thinking about starting to have guests hopefully uh, Granger and I are trying to get this whole area set up so that we can have guests come and I was thinking of possibly starting that on episode 200 don't quote me I'm not promising anything but that's my goal is to try to get everything ready, get a couple of guests lined up so that I can bring that to you starting soon. I would love to just sit and chat with other men and women in my life who I feel could be a wonderful voice for you to hear. So let's pray. And then I want to talk about pride. Well, Jesus, we just thank you for the gift of another day. Lord, we, we love you and we praise you. God, humble us to your majesty. Lord, humble us so that we know our place in this world, God, and that we know that every good gift, everything, every everything good or bad is from you or you have allowed it for a time or a season or a purpose. God, help us to trust in that. Help us to rest in that fact that we serve a sovereign God, that nothing is out of your control, that nothing surprises you, and that you have a plan and a purpose for everything that we face. God, help us to see that. Draw people to you. Open their eyes. Open their hearts. Help us to be willing vessels to plant those seeds for other people to know you and to be saved by you, God. We love you. I pray that somebody hears a word from you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, I've been thinking a lot about the sin of pride lately. And man, isn't that, isn't that something that we all struggle with? I think every single person in the world struggles with pride. And if you think that you don't, then that is probably an issue of pride in itself because it's a sin within all of us. And it's something that we all deal with, I think, on a a daily basis. It is that sin that led to the fall. It is that, that deep, dark sin that led to the fall. And it's, it's, it was deceptive. And it was quiet in the way that Satan had deceived Eve to have her eat of that fruit in the garden. She had every, they had everything. They were walking with the Lord. But the enemy got in and deceived her and made her think that by eating of that fruit that she could be like God. So the definition of pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired, confidence and satisfaction in one's self. Pride can also be seen as a sense of entitlement for yourself, and it it goes directly against what Jesus taught, which was to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. The pride for a a self-centered life goes directly against what Jesus taught. And there are a few different ways that people can be prideful. I I think many people think that Pride ultimately is someone who is arrogant or boastful or, or strong or, or smart. Um, and they, they, boast in those, they boast in those qualities. They boast about their own successes or their own accomplishments or even in their own morality. You know, you can have people that are, are self-righteous and, and boast in their, in their morality that, oh, well, I would never do that. Or I am much better than them because I don't do that. It's very judgmental. And... It can make you think that you are a much better person than 
truly you are in your heart. Another way that pride can be seen is an inverted pride, which I don't think people really truly think about as pride, but it's a way that it's, it's like this sense of self-pity and moping around. And it's this woe is me, life is out to get me, everything is bad for me, the world would be better off without me, all I do is mess up, life is never going to get better, everyone's out to get me, I'm unlovable, um, I'm such a sinner that God could never forgive me. I know that I've said that before. When we think or we say this, and I've thought it, I've thought it, I'm sure I've said it, you know, I, I, I've, I've done this, this sin that God could never forgive me for, but when we think and when we say that, we are believing that our sins are greater than the blood of Christ. When we think those things about ourselves, we are believing a lie that God's grace and Jesus' blood could not cover that. And it's a lie from the pit of hell. We make it all about ourselves when we walk around that way, when we, when we think those things, those negative thoughts and those negative, that negative self-talk to ourselves. It's all a lie, but it's a form of pride. It's a form of inverted pride. We're not boasting about ourselves, but we're sulking. We're sulking about everything that's going wrong in, our, wrong in our lives. Another way that pride can rise up in us, which I've been guilty of as well, I'm guilty of, of all these things, is when we're stubborn. I don't need help. I can do it. I don't need help. I don't need anyone to help me. I, I, can, I can figure it out. But the Lord is so gracious to put people in our lives to help us when we need it. And I've said, I've said this before, as a mom, it took me a long time to accept help. You know, I think we try to be super mom. We try to do it all on our own, but it, it depletes us. It, it takes everything from us. We can't be the best mom that we can be if we're trying to be super mom all the time. We're going to fall. We're going to fall. And God is so good to put people in our lives that want to be a blessing to us. And I struggle with the sin of pride of, I don't want to put anyone else out. So... I think I can just handle it all. But that takes the joy away from somebody who wants to bring you a meal, who wants to help you with your kids, who wants to help you financially if you're struggling. It can be hard to accept that help, but that's a form of pride. That's, that's being stubborn when God is saying, I have this blessing for you and you're not taking it. So that can be a sense of pride in ourselves. Jonathan Edwards says, pride is the worst viper in the heart. It's the first sin that ever entered into the universe. It lies lowest of all in the foundation of the whole building of sin. Of all lusts, it is the most secret, deceitful, and unsearchable in its ways of working. It's ready to mix with everything. Nothing is so hateful to God, contrary to the spirit of the gospel, or of so dangerous consequence. And that's true. Pride is the worst viper in the heart. It's the first sin that ever entered. It's the most secret and it's the most deceitful. And it's ready to mix with everything. Nothing is so hateful to God, contrary to the spirit of the gospel or of so dangerous consequence. Oh, wow. It's so true. John, uh, John MacArthur says, Now nothing is more natural to fallen human beings than pride. Pride, frankly, is the defining sin of fallenness. If you want to get in touch with what it means to be fallen, it means to be self-centered, self-love, self-satisfaction, self-promotion, self-exaltation, self-fulfillment. Those are all the passions of a fallen heart. And isn't that the world we live in right now? That's the world we live in. Everything is self-centered. Everything is all about loving yourself, self-satisfaction, self-promotion, all of those things. And he says it's because we live in an upside down world. Society has come to terms with its fallenness and relabeled it as virtue. This world is upside down for sure. And we have made idols out of ourselves. We have lost sight of God. We think that we get to decide our own identity. We think that we get to decide that. And it was given to us before the foundation of the world. It was given to you when God knit you together in your mother's womb. God is the author of identity, not you, not yourself. And that doesn't feel good to hear, but it's true. I want to read a few verses on pride and what God thinks of it. 
So Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Proverbs 16, 5, Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Psalm 31, 23 says, Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. The Bible speaks so much about pride and about humility, but how how do we kill this pride? How are we to kill the pride in our lives and walk in humility? First, I want to give you a few verses on humility. Proverbs 22, 4 says, The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Proverbs 29, 23, One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Matthew 23, 12, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Philippians 2, 3, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Lastly, James 4.10, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. So how do we kill the pride? How do we do this? How do we kill this sin in our lives? And how do we walk in humility before our Lord? I think the first step in walking with humility is to realize the nature of our depravity. We are nothing apart from God. We are nothing apart from God. He, he has done it all and he continues to do it all. Every good thing that we have, everything that we have, every blessing in our lives, every achievement, every honor is from the Lord. And we can begin to walk in humility when we walk in submission to God. When we surrender and know that he is Lord and we are not. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you. Guys, we are born sinners. We are born sinners in need of a Savior, no matter how good of a person you think you are. The Bible says there is not one that is good. We all sin every day. And we have to come to the reality that we need to be saved. We need to be saved. And if you are walking around thinking that you don't need, have a need for a Savior, then the enemy is blinding you. The enemy is blinding you. We are all sick. We are all in need of a great physician. And the Bible says that he didn't come to call the righteous. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to save sinners like you and me. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner that we can humble ourselves and say, God, I am a sinner and I need you. Then we can begin to walk in that humility that he has for us. Number two, I have that. We can begin to walk in humility by confession and prayer. So as I just said, we got it. We have to confess. We have to confess that we struggle with pride. I struggle with pride. We all do. Pray for the Lord to search our hearts and reveal those things to us. Reveal those, th- reveal those things that we think. Ask him to, to shut our mouths before we say something. Ask him to humble us in such a way that we think before we speak. Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. This is not something that we can do on our own. We are fleshly creatures. We, we are prideful by nature. We are sinful by nature. And we need God to lead us in the way of everlasting. To search our hearts. To reveal these things to us. To prune out all of these sins in our lives. And to help us to put them to death every day. And it's not a one and done thing. We have to wake up and and kill the sin of pride every single day. Number three, I have we have to realize that we are not as special as we all think we are. <laughs> I know your mom probably told you growing up that you were so special and you're amazing and you're awesome. And I tell the same things to my kids. But I also let them know that we are sinners in need of a savior. And we can do nothing apart from the Lord. So we tend to live in this self-centered bubble, this, this bubble of comfort. We want easy lives. We don't want anything to go wrong. We don't want to suffer. We have a sense of entitlement. You know, we, we think, how dare you, God? How could you do this? But we need to turn our eyes to the cross. 
We need to turn our eyes to the cross and aim to mirror the same humility that Jesus had. He came down low. He met people where they were. He didn't deserve what he got. He didn't deserve anything. You know, people say, why do bad things happen to good people? He was the only one that was good. And look what happened to him. He didn't deserve any of that, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself to his father. And he said, not my will, but yours be done. And we need to walk in that same humility. We need a smaller view of who we think we are and a bigger view of who God is. Number four, I have, I have, we have to put away that sense of entitlement. Do you feel like people owe you things? Do you, do they need to act a certain way? Do you always want to get your way? The sooner we realize that we were on a fast track to hell. We were born into sin. We were on our way to hell. But God, rich in mercy, while we were still sinners, gave his son for us. He saved us by grace through faith. The sooner that we realize that, we can live a life in humble surrender for that gift. When we realize, when we humble ourselves and, 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 and turn our eyes up and realize, God, I don't deserve what you did. I am, I am a sinner. I deserve hell. But by your grace, you saved me. You chose me. And now I'm going to live my life in, in full surrender to you and humility for what you have done for me that I don't deserve. And God, help me. Help me to be able to, to, to tell other people of your goodness, to, to point people to you. Help me to plant those seeds so that you can save them, so that they can feel this, this joy that I feel, this forgiveness that I feel, this purpose that I feel. And it's all for you and for your glory. We have to aim to see others as more important than ourselves. Aim to serve the Lord above all else, but aim to serve others. Stop thinking so much about ourselves and see how you can pour into others. See how you can give to others. Serve your husband in a way, in a surprising way this week. Serve your kids, even when they're acting up, even when they're acting out. Still serve them in a way that... You have to kind of swallow your pride a little bit. You have to swallow your pride a little bit. Humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. If you have wronged somebody this week, if you have wronged somebody a long time ago and the Lord is pricking your heart, humble yourself right now. Pick up the phone and call them and ask for forgiveness. Offer forgiveness. Offer forgiveness where your pride is saying, oh, I don't want to forgive them. They don't deserve it. Neither do we. We don't deserve the forgiveness that, that the Lord has lavished upon us. So we, in turn, are called to humble ourselves and offer that same forgiveness and grace for others. And I have number six, stop being stubborn. <laughs> stop being stubborn and let people help you. Let people help you. It took so long for me to accept, accept help from people. And I don't know, that could have something to do with your to-do list. Allow someone to help you take something off your plate. Allow someone to help you come and take the kids for you. Allow someone to bring you a meal. Don't feel like you're putting them out. You're, you're, for many people, that's a joy for them to get to do. So allow them to do that. Allow them to help you with a job assignment. Allow them to help you financially if they are able to. I know sometimes that's hard to do, but allow them to do that because the Lord has placed it on their heart to do that. And the Lord is, is trying to be a blessing for you. So don't insult the spirit of grace. Don't insult that. Don't, in, don't insult what, the, what God is trying to do for you. Accept it. Swallow your pride and say, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. I will accept it and I will, I will have gratitude for it. And then I will go out and pay it forward to somebody else. Lastly, I have stop believing the lies of the enemy. Stop believing the lies of the enemy. And this can go two ways. He can lie to you and deceive you about how great you are and about how you don't need the Lord. He can put doubts in your mind about the truth of the Bible and about the truth of God's word, which is what he did right in the beginning, which is what led to the fall. He, he placed a doubt in their mind about who God was, about, if God's, if it, about what God said, if it was true. 
He planted a seed of doubt in their mind. So stop listening to the enemy. It can also put a lie in your head to make you feel that God could never forgive you. That you can never change, that this will never get better, that this pain will never go away. And that can lead you to stay stuck in a, in a place where you can't move forward, which is what he wants. And he is a liar. He is a liar. And he wants to put the sin of pride in you, whether it's boasting that you don't need God or whether it's boasting that God could never forgive you. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And you are loved. You are loved by the creator of the universe. And he formed you and knit you together. And he sent his son out of his great love for you to be a substitute for your sin, to take on the wrath that you deserve. He took it all for you so that you could be give, so that you could be forgiven and so that you wouldn't have to walk in this pain so that you could know that you have purpose and that he has a plan for you so don't allow don't don't listen to the lies of the enemy on either side of the coin go to the truth of God's word humble yourself in full surrender and say lord search my heart I want to I want to put this sin to death this this sense of of pride in me. I don't want to boast in anything other than you. Fall on your feet. Go to his word today. And I want us to wage war on the pride that is in our lives and ask the Lord to search our heart to to seek out those places and to help us to put them to death because it's not easy. It's something that we all struggle with every single day, but it's something that is an abomination to the Lord. He seeks for you to be humble. He seeks for you to be grateful. So I want to encourage you to put that that sin of pride to death this week. Count others as more important than yourself because it is so freeing and so beautifully rewarding when we truly humble ourselves before our Creator and when we truly go out to seek and to plant seeds for others so that they can know the joy that is in you. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are chosen. I hope you have a wonderful week. Comment below or comment on any of the platforms, any other topics that you want me to to talk about. Comment um, specific, maybe questions for those short arises that I'm going to start bringing you. If you want to find me, you can find me at arisewithamber.com. You can find me at arisewithamber at gmail.com if you want to shoot me a message. And I'm over at Amber Emily Smith on Instagram. Thank you guys. I'll see you next week. You're chosen.